we acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the peoples whom, whom Treaty 4 was signed and the territory wherein our church resides and our responsibility as Treaty 4 members. We also honor the heritage and gifts of the heritage of the Métis people. Good morning and welcome to this time of worship. I'm glad that we're able to gather once again and um, hopefully we're inspired by the Pentecost fire and wind that comes with uh, today. And good morning to those that are watching online. Sorry for our Facebook friends, but we're again having technical difficulties on Facebook and it's switched over to YouTube. And so hopefully they have found their way to YouTube this morning and um, they will be joining us there as well. So this morning is communion, and again, our communion table is open to everyone. There is no precondition to be able to have communion here with us, and so um, hopefully you received the crackers and grapes, our deconstructed communion element. Um, it's the safest way we can figure how to do communion without passing plates all over the place. Um, you will notice that we are collecting bread and um, uh, cash donations for Carmichael Outreach. Uh, they will be taken either today or on Monday to go to Carmichael to help feed the hungry of our city. Um, just a reminder to council members, you meet on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And next Sunday, for those of you that remember, Ken, Ken Powers will be here joining you in leading worship. Uh, I'll be away on that Sunday. Um, as well as, um, this is Pride Month, the month of, um, that's to acknowledge and honor and to uphold the LGBTQ2S um, uh, people of our, of our province, our country, of our world, and of our church. And so we have candles lit here for, in honor of them. And... Um, let us uphold these people because um, they are here amongst us and in our lives, in our families, in our world. And so um, it's a way of saying, yes, you are welcome. I also like you to hold Betty in your prayers this week. Uh, Betty has cancer, has returned, and she is in hospital and things aren't looking well for her. So please hold her in your prayers. And I think that is it for announcements. Um, did anybody else have an announcement this morning? Nope? Okay. Let us uh, turn to the uh, call to worship that's responsive. On this day of Pentecost, the followers of Jesus gathered in one place and suddenly from heaven, Spirit gave them ability. Bonjour, hello. Come on, let's be spirit files, let's go. <laughs> Whatever language you can say it in. So we continue to, we continue saying together. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, breathe into our heart the holy fire of change, sparks of resiliency, improvision, innovation, and ingenuity. See our talents flare with holy energy. Help or give us wings of piping hot courage. Ignite our tongues with compassionate words and burning confrontation and refusal of all evil. Fill our souls with flames of inclusive love as we reach out to others, enveloping us all in a glowing coals of acceptance. Then grant us lasting embers of strength and faith to embrace the new world of your creation. Amen. Let us join in singing our first hymn, Come, O Holy Spirit.
we might have had a bit of confusion with that hymn, but ah, it was lively, right? <laughs> it's a Pentecost hymn. It's supposed to confuse us a bit just to get us going. Friends, let us come before God in prayer as we talk, talk about the transformation in our lives that God's always actively working to do. Let us pray. Sometimes, loving God, we feel defeated and downcast. Sometimes the choices we make hurt and wound others. More often than not, also wounding ourselves in the process. May we start anew, learning from the past in order to grow more fully into your way. Inspire us, Holy Spirit, that we may know we are not alone, that life, new life is ours for the asking in humility, in hope, and in trust. Amen. Friends, transformation is ours for the asking when we walk and talk with God, change our ways and reconcile. The spirit of truth will guide and sustain us on that journey of forgiveness. In companionship with the spirit, we are made whole. Thanks be to God. I think I got this mixed up. We're doing the Oh, yes, time. No, you're going to do the anthem first and then. Sorry about that.
All right, that sounds good. Is it okay if Daryl's a kid today? <laughs> yeah. <gasps> yeah. Should we go? Okay, you go with Daryl. <laughs> yes, so how are you today, Chloe? Good. good, that's good. Okay, so we've had enough of my stories today. I think what we're going to do instead <laughs> is we're going to watch a pretty cool video, and it's about Pentecost. Do you know what Pentecost is? No? So uh, we're going to watch a video what it's all about, and then we're going to start to talk about it a little more, okay? Sure. Okay, cool. I really hope they can help me, Father Black said, while heading for the entrance of the Swedish furniture store. Welcome to Okia, a voice sounded from the intercom. Enjoy our Pentecost weekend sale. Skirret lamps, 30% off. A personal tables, 12% off. Is this the help desk? Father Black asked. Your, answered the man. Good, said Father Black. I need some help. Last week I bought a couple of double-decker benches, so I could fit twice as many parishioners in my church. But I'm trying to follow the manual, and I can't figure out how to put them together. Jordisch born, der ritte git der gö. Ordisch de bordisch de urn, bork bork bork, the man answered. Father Black gave him a puzzled look. I'm sorry, I don't speak Swedish. Can you explain that again, please? The man answered. Took the planken together, put the screwins in the planken. Okay, yeah? No, not okay, said Father Black. I don't understand what you are saying. Hi, Father Black, he heard a familiar voice say. Is there a problem? Hi, Tim. I can't understand these Swedish instructions, Father Black sighed. I guess I need another Pentecost to understand this man. What do you mean, Father Black? How could Pentecost help you with your furniture? <laughs> Let me explain, said Father Black. Fifty days after Easter and only ten days after the Ascension, the friends of Jesus were together in one place. Suddenly a noise came from the sky, like a strong wind, and it filled the entire house. And then tongues as of fire appeared, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different languages. It was very busy in Jerusalem. People from every nation under heaven were in town. When they heard the sound, they all gathered in a large crowd. But they were confused. Each one heard them speaking in his own language. Everyone was amazed. They asked, Aren't these people there Galileans? And how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are all from different countries, regions, and backgrounds, and yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty act of God. You see, Tim, I wish the Holy Spirit would give me the gift of the Swedish language so I could understand these instructions. Well, I'm not sure if that will happen, said Tim, but my girlfriend Elsa here is from Sweden. I'm sure she'd help. And Elsa talked to the people at Okea, and she and Tim went to Father Black Church to help him build his double-decker benches. That day, Father Black learned that the Holy Spirit is a helper, but he has also many other helpers, like Elsa and Tim. And the double-decker benches were a great success at Pentecost. Okay, so does that story make sense to you? Cool. Do you think Daryl should invest in some double-decker benches for the church? <laughs> okay, so we're going to go downstairs. We'll talk about all the cool Star Wars characters in their Pentecost. And we'll do some crafts. Sound good? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if Daryl's invited today. Our scripture lesson today is from Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them heard them each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Mendes, Elmanites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? Others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. They sure looked drunk. They sounded drunk. They acted drunk. But Peter denied it. We're not drunk, he said. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. So, which is it? Were they sober, as Peter said, or were they filled with a new wine? Yes, Yes is really the only answer to that question. They were not drunk, but they were intoxicated. They were sober and filled with a new wine. That is the gift and paradox of this day, the Feast of Pentecost. So I want to ask you a question, but don't answer it just yet. The question you first hear probably isn't the one I'm asking. What are you drunk on this morning? What intoxicates your life? Michael Marsh from Interrupting the Silence writes, Once upon a time, I was drunk on success. I was on the fast track and intoxicated with becoming the youngest partner in my law firm, the guy with the most billable hours, the one big client's requested by name. Once upon a time, I was drunk on busyness and exhaustion, intoxicated with self-importance and the need to prove myself. 
Once upon a time, I was drunk on fear, intoxicated by self-doubt and self-criticism. Once upon a time, I was drunk on toys, intoxicated by a bigger boat, twin engines, and open gulf waters. Once upon a time, I was drunk on perfectionism, intoxicated with being right, doing right, and having my life put together in a neatly organized and beautifully wrapped package. Once a time I was, upon a time, I was drunk on the need for approval, intoxicated by what others thought and said of me. Once upon a time, I was drunk on knowledge, intoxicated with figuring all out and getting the right answer. Once upon a time, I was drunk on, well, by now you probably figured out where this is headed. You get my point? So let me ask you again, what are you drunk on this morning? What intoxicates your life? What is your drink of choice? I wish I could tell you that I have quit drinking, Michael says. On my better days, I have, or at least I have, cut way back. Some days, however, I slip. I take out a glass, fill it up, and drink deep. The thing is, I'm just as thirsty when I finish the glass as before I drank it. So, pour me another one. Line them up. You know what I'm talking about, right, he says. Maybe you've done the same thing. This is the intoxication that poisons and distorts our life. It causes us to stumble and fall. It blurs our vision to the holiness and beauty of who we really are and who we are to become. It is a self-betrayal by what we do, the very opposite of everything we, want, we say we want. I don't think any of us really want to live that way. That is not God's intention or desire for our lives. That's not the life Christ lived or the one he offers us. We need sobriety. We need to get sober. Pentecost is the sobriety that frees us from this intoxication. It is the power of God to change and transform our lives. This sobriety doesn't mean we stop drinking. However, it means we drink a new wine. At Pentecost, a new spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, fills and intoxicates us. We are intoxicated by God's love, God's mercy, God's grace, God's generosity, God's beauty, God's deeds of power in our lives. Pentecost is a day of sober drunkenness. <laughs> How's that for a paradox? Sober drunkenness. Let me offer a few examples of what I'm talking about. One time I went into, I think it was a store, I can't exactly remember, to get a service or get a product. The woman working there sort of ticked me off. So I became rude, not very nice, something I am ashamed about. I left the store, and then something hit me. I went back, and much to the woman's surprise, I apologized for my behavior without making any excuses why I did what I did. That was a moment of Pentecost. It may not have been the drama of rushing wind, tongues of fire, and foreign languages, but it was filled with the power of God to change lives. In that moment, I was sober to and from my past, and intoxicated with compassion and concern for others. Sober drunkenness. Think about that day you fell in love. It may not have, been, have gone anywhere, or it may have developed and lasted for years. Regardless, it was a day of sober drunkenness. You were completely sober, I hope. Your mind was clear and convinced. Your eyes were focused. Your intentions were strong. At the same time, you were completely swept off your feet, crazy drunk in love. You knew this was it. 
You tasted it, and you wanted more of it. And you couldn't even name what that it was. That was a moment of Pentecost, the power of God filling and changing you. You might say, well, that was just an emotions, feelings, and hormones. Maybe so, but that's not all it was. You felt it, if only for a moment, what it was like to lose yourself to and find yourself in the life of another. You were filled with a spirit, that not of your own, one that did not create and could not, con- one that you did not create and could not control. You were inflamed with the love of God. Have you ever received a gift that caught you so completely by surprise that you were left speechless? Anybody here done that? A few of you? Geez, you guys live boring lives. Let me tell you, (laughs) I've had a few of them. It's the kind of gift that is completely undeserved, unexpected, and unimaginable. It wasn't just an object or an action that you received. It was a grace that took you to a place of sober drunkenness. You were dizzy with love, joy, and gratitude at the same time, completely grounded and clear-headed about the significance and the meaning of the gift. That was another Pentecost, and the wind of God's generosity had blown through and somehow changed both you and the giver. This kind of stuff is happening all the time. It's always Pentecost. It's all around us. It fills us. Pentecost is just not an event in the history of the church. It is that an event, but it's also a grace that precedes, fills, and follows the event. The grace of Pentecost transcends time, space, and the circumstances of our lives. The Spirit of God is continually being poured into our lives, bringing us to sobriety and immerating us with the new wine of Christ's life. Pentecost is a gift and grace to be lived, living under the influence. That's what Pentecost is about. So tell me about your own life. What are the moments of sober drunkenness for you? Where is Pentecost happening for you? The sober drunkenness of Pentecost fills our lives to the brim with love. It opens our eyes to the mystery of God and the wonder and the beauty of life. It softens our hearts and calls us to find ourselves in the lives of others. It allows us to stand in that most holy place of truest and most authentic self. That's why we celebrate Pentecost. That's why we begin today's liturgy praying to the Holy Spirit. That's why we follow Jesus. That's why we celebrate people like Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Archbishop Oscar Romano. That's why we find certain people so attractive and we want to be like them and have what they have. That's why we show it up here today. We come here today to be reminded and give thanks for the Pentecost reality of our own lives and to get sober and drink new wine and to be set out to live under that influence. May it be so. Amen.
Friends, let us pray. Loving God, this is the day of Pentecost, the day on which you sent your Holy Spirit in new and profound and transforming ways upon your people. We recall how your Spirit empowers your people to understand one another, and we acknowledge that understanding is an important step on the road to peace. As we remember, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon your sons and daughters, upon the females and males, among, and upon young and old. As we remember those whose lives are forever altered by the horrors of war, of racial tension and discord, of racism and conflict, of histories that are way too hard to understand sometimes. We pray that a renewed desire for peace might beat within our hearts and that a vision of understanding and celebration of the diversity of your people rest upon us and burn within our hearts. We pray this in the name of the risen one whose prayer we share together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our suffering, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Amen. That was a wonderful choir. I can guarantee you right now, Karen did get onto YouTube. She's bawling her eyeballs out right now because that's one of her favorite pieces. <laughs> Friends, it's through the Spirit that we are offered the gifts of God. So let us share the gifts of God as we sing together for the gift of creation. The Spirit gives life to our gifts. In the spirits, we give thanks continually. In the spirits, we encourage each other. In the spirit, we, are, we care compassionately. In the spirit, we energize our neighborhood. In spirit, we support our mission. We pray, share, and work in the spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So friends, come to this table where bread and cup are transformed by the Spirit of God into a meal of love and grace, a supper of visions and dreams, a table where all souls are welcome. Let us pray. Loving God, whose divine lungs ex exhale the Spirit into our world, your breath continues to transform our world from the still to the stirring. Before the earth was formed, the Spirit of God swirled through voids and shadows. As humans were created, the air of God filled the lungs of Adam and the soul of Eve. This divine air continues to fill us up, when our bones are dry and our spirits are sluggish. On this day of Pentecost, we celebrate the breath of the Spirit coming upon the disciples. We invite the Spirit to come upon these elements. God of winds, pour out your Spirit to make the elements come alive for us. Make this meal awaken our sleepy hearts and stagnant souls. May this time of eating and drinking be one where we stir from our sadness and rise from our hopelessness. May we begin to celebrate visions and animate the dreams that have only been alive in our minds. As we share this meal, let us remember our siblings and faith who came to this table and decades and centuries past and our children who may surround this table in the future. Each generation uniquely celebrates your presence, spirit of life. The night before Jesus died was a solemn time around the table. Breaking bread, drinking from the cup, Jesus asked, asking to remember him in our eating and drinking. There was a time to mourn followed by a time to dance. And after the day of resurrection, the disciples ate on the beach with the risen Christ, celebrating new life, new hope, new vitality. On this Pentecost, as we come to the table, let us celebrate the spirit of resurrection and the promise of a needed second wind in our own lives. May the bread broken bring fulfillment and wholeness to our lives. May this cup poured out 
quench thirsting souls. Let us partake in this celebration meal together, the bread of life. the cup of blessing. Let us join together in the post-communion prayer. Spirit of God, who fed the multitudes, provide the manna in the wilderness, and bless the elements. Let us join in singing our final hymn, I Feel the Winds of God.
as you leave this time together. The breath of the Spirit goes with you, enabling you to pay attention to the needs around you, calling on you to use your talents wisely, showing you the opportunities for friendship, and sharing, reminding you that forgiveness is possible and gives you the strength to face each new day with hope. The breath of the Spirit goes with you. Its inspiration will never leave you. Amen.